Hi everyone, welcome back to Art Lessons with Rossi. Today we're going to be using watercolor and to explore watercolor we're going to be um, seeing how complementary colors mix together. Uh, what I've done is I have stretched my watercolor paper and I have drawn with graphite uh, a couple of different objects, an apple, a clothespin, a little uh, hippopotamus uh, toy. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use red and green to do a value scale, excuse me, excuse me a color scale uh, uh, in mixing those colors together. And I'm also going to use these in uh, the four apples, um, a scale of yellow to purple uh, with the clothespin and orange to blue with the hippopotamus. I have a water, Windsor Newton watercolor palette. Uh, and these are block watercolors that are solid until they're mixed with water. I have some clean water and some watercolor brushes. I also have a paper towel that's going to sit right next to me and is going to be really useful as we get going. So uh, let's start with the uh, red and green and think about how we're going to mix uh, things together. Uh, I'm going to use my brush. And I'm actually going to just add some water in my little mixing palette here with this portable uh, tray. Uh, and the first thing that I want to do is I want to uh, explore what kind of reds I have. So I have a really bright crimson. And then I also have um, a, a cooler red that's more of a magenta. And for this exercise, I'm actually going to use the crimson. And then the other uh, thing I want to know is I want to know what, what greens I have. And I have a um, forest green. And then I have a much um, uh, darker uh, green as well, like a hunter green. And again, for this, um, I think I'm going to use this. Um, brighter uh, green for this exercise. So I'm using those uh, those two and I'm actually going to take the magenta and I'm going to just um, take some of that out so that I have a place in the middle where I can start to mix these two colors together. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to show you how to work wet on wet. So in this first value scale, I'm going, excuse me, color scale, I keep saying value instead. I'm going to just wet the little block that is going to have the bright red uh, watercolor. So after um, blocking that out, I'm actually going to go, I'm going to go right to the nice bright watercolor. I'm going to load my brush and I'm just going to place that watercolor Wherever watercolor is wet, it's going to um, be able to move, that pigment is going to move into that water. So I'm going to uh, work with that brightest one, and I'm going to just try to control it and cover that entire little section. Now um, I want to do the opposite and put down that same green. And again, I'm going to get this area wet. I'm going to go to my green and I'm going to put down that nice, beautiful, bright green. And I'm really thinking about what is the most saturated version of that color when uh, creating these. Now, I don't want to put them right next to each other because they're going to bleed into each other if they're both wet. So in this second one, I want to have this beautiful bright red, but then add just a little bit of green into it and see um, how that changes the color. So I'm going to load my brush again, and this time to show you, I'm going to work dry. So instead of adding water in first, I'm going to go in and I'm just going to uh, paint in with a wet brush onto my dry paper. And you get a different effect. The watercolor isn't going to be um, running. You have a little bit more control. And I'm going to add just a little bit of green to that. 
So now it's going to work a little bit like wor working wet on wet. I'm going to um, rinse my brush and then I'm going to move that color around and mix it right on uh, my paper. Now there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Just like you're seeing me work wet on wet, you're seeing me add one color into another, you can mix directly on your paper or you can pre-mix this color in your palette. And so it, it gives you different effects. So we're going to play with a couple of different effects while creating this value scale. In the next uh, little tile, let's see what happens when we pre-mix that color. So I'm going to take uh, some red and I'm going to put it here in my middle um, mixing palette. And then I'm going to take some green. And now with this one, I want to add more green into it than I had in the first one. And so I'm going to make it just a little bit darker, creating a really beautiful brown. So what happens when we mix, um, when we mix colors that are complementary together is that we will end up making some really beautiful neutral colors. And so as, um, as we continue to add the complementary color, the, um, the color that we will create will be uh, almost a, um, a gray or a brown in a, diff in a different version of that uh, original uh, color in, in either direction. So it's a really great way to create shadows, to create um, uh, parts in our composition where something needs to get darker. And for us to understand how we can have a really uh, interesting range of uh, color while just mixing two complementary colors together. It also creates a beautiful cohesiveness to our palette. So we can have um, really uh, um, a cohesive palette where we're using the same colors in, in all of the composition, uh, but those colors are just mixed together, giving us these uh, changes in darker value. And as you can see, I um, still have just a little bit of red in the part that I'm mixing, but as I add more and more green, uh, the color is changing completely. So we're going from warm to cool and it's becoming more and more green. And then in this last one, um, I really want to push that green and I might not be able to, to do so by just mixing um, here, I might actually need to go to a really bright green and then just add a tiny, tiny little bit of red. But let's see what happens. Maybe I can get it pretty close by just adding and saturating that green in here. And let's go wet on wet this time just to see how that's going to work and what that's going to look like. So I'm going to get this uh, little square to be wet first. And then I'm going to come in, I'm going to load my brush with this um, color. And you can see that um, my color is going to be a little bit more translucent as I do that because um, I'm working wet on wet. But I can load that color in and I can keep putting it there. And what's so cool about working wet on wet is that the uh, color will stay exactly where I um, have placed the water itself. Okay, so now that we have our nice palette, uh, let's use uh, the different uh, gradations of, of these two colors mixing together uh, in these apples. So in this first apple, I'm going to use the bright um, cadmium red and just a little bit of green to create all the highlights and shadows in this apple. Then I'm going to use just these two colors that are in this midtone 
then in this one that apple is going to look more green and in the last in the last one i'll use those two colors so like a green apple going from a red apple to a green apple so let's get started so i'm going to start wet on wet so i'm going to show you guys what that's going to look like if you're uh, working on an entire um, little painting so i'm going to get the entire apple wet except for the stem I'm going to use my brush. I'm going to curve around that form and making sure that everything is nice and wet. I'm going to come in with my um, beautiful red color. And as you can see, wherever I place it, it's just going to spill out uh, and start to move with the water. But it doesn't mean I don't have control. I can actually get right to the edges where the water um, stops and continue to add this color very purposefully of where I actually want it to be. But it also has a little bit of a mind of its own and it can um, go in its own direction as well because, um, because it's going to move with the water. And it's gonna to continue to spread. Now I'm going to take a little bit of the red I'm just going to come in and grab a little green to make this um, color just a little bit darker. I think that's about right. And then I'm going to add that in places in this apple. And, and I can even add it inside of the um, color that I've already placed, letting those two mix together. And I'll also let some of the white of the paper continue to show which is gonna leave that apple feeling really nice and bright. I'm also gonna use this in the shadow. This one I'm gonna do uh, wet on dry. And as I touch the uh, part where the apple is wet, some of that color is gonna bleed into that shadow, which the effect's kind of nice. So there's a start to that. Now, if you're working with watercolor and something uh, isn't quite to your liking, what you can do is you can take your uh, paper towel and you can actually come in and you can put it right over the watercolor and lift off. And as you can see, you can lift off quite a bit. So if um, you felt like you put too much uh, pigment, if you put too much watercolor on, you can always lift it back off and then do it again uh, with however, with whatever you think is going to be appropriate for your piece. Or maybe just one little section you think had too much of a certain uh, color, you can just use the, the side of the paper towel. So let's say that I can like just fold it into a little section and I just want one little part to uh, get white again, like maybe I forgot or want a highlight to show and, and I can pull that back up. So I'm gonna play with this a little bit more and then I'll leave it alone and let it dry because watercolor does not like it when you mess with it too much. It has, um, it definitely wants to spend some time being wet and then it likes to dry. So while that apple is drying, I'm going to go to this next apple and I'm going to mix those two colors uh, together for myself first and then I'm going to work uh, wet on, um, uh, on dry to show you how that is going to look and how that's different. So I'm trying to mix that color, just adding a little bit more green into it. I might need to even go back into that. Um, Kelly green and and grab some I don't know if it's a Kelly green or like a hunter uh, this is a hunter this is a hunter green this feels like a Kelly green to me and then I need one that's one darker than that but not as um, as green as that other part of the palette so let's see I'm just gonna mix until I'm happy Okay, I'm starting to see a difference between those two. And you want to wash your brush in between, kind of dab it on a paper towel. 
So let's work wet on dry and take a look at those different effects. So this is my lighter of the two colors. So I'm going to place that um, watercolor exactly where I want it. And as you can see, I have a little contour drawing that shows me where I want certain things to be lighter and darker. I can always add more water if my watercolor isn't moving enough. Like that one didn't feel like it was moving enough, so I just added a little bit more. And then let's go to the darker one. Place it here at the top. I'm going to leave the stems white for a little bit because I can go back in and make them dark afterward. And it's okay if things start to like bleed into each other. Even if I want to um, change the color just a little bit, even directly on the paper itself. Like I felt like that one is a little bit too close. So I went back in, grabbed some darker green, and now I'm kind of working wet, wet on wet as well as wet on dry. And let's go on the other side and add some of that darker color on the other side. And I'm going to leave out the uh, places where I want to keep a highlight. And again, I can add more water. I can also go to a slightly smaller brush and really control that to be wherever I want my edges to be. I can blend things together. I can move that pigment and, and that watercolor. So if maybe this darker area needs a little bit something a little bit brighter or again if it needs to get a little bit greener you can do that right on the surface so don't be afraid to mix not only in the palette but right also on your paper and i'm going to add in a shadow and again it's okay if that bleeds kind of like it when it's bleeding and same thing as I showed you guys before, if you feel like something, um, you like missed a highlight or something needs to get lighter, you can always just take your paper towel, uh, make that change, pull up some of that color, and then add back on top. Okay. So again, I'm going to let those be nice and loose. Um, so now let's make some colors that are closer to green. By just using those two colors, we're still just using the, the red and green. And let's see. And what I'll do is I'm going to show you guys the rest of this um, uh, little value this color scale I keep wanting to call it a value scale and um, and then I'll go into a time lapse and I'll do the other uh, two value scales the purple uh, and yellow and, and blue and orange I'm gonna do those um, as a time lapse so you can also see how those are all mixing together So here's that green apple. I'm going to play again with those two different uh, colors. Playing around with that. And just so you guys know, the, um, the watercolor does change as it dries. So you want to wait for it to dry and then go back in and start to make some changes because um, you can't do everything on the, like, a, or I don't think you can do everything on the first uh, layer. Uh, watercolor layers really well. You can actually uh, put down one color and then glaze another color over it. Let's actually try that for this last one. So I'm going to start with the bright, bright green. I'm going to put that down first. Definitely feel like I need a little bit more water. And... Um, and then I'm going to let it dry for a little bit, and then I'll glaze with, a, with another uh, color over it. And um, 
as you have different amounts of water on your brush, your um, as you have different amounts of water on your brush, the opacity or translucency of that watercolor is going to change. So you can have um, with the same stroke, depending on how much water there is, something that's really light versus something that's that's quite dark and saturated. So I'm going to add just a little bit of darker color in here and then I'll go back in and do some glazing after it starts to dry a little. And I bet that we can do that with this first red um, apple because it's still pretty wet. But I could still go in and start to add some more uh, color if I wanted to. But we'll let those we'll let those dry for for a little bit and then we can go back into them. Um, so well, again, what I'm looking for is a complementary color mixing. Uh, with uh, complementaries of red and green, yellow and purple, uh, orange and blue, with you mixing those colors and then going into forms that you have drawn so that you can start to play with uh, two of those uh, colors in each of these four drawings. Now with this next value scale, I actually need to mix my violet. And so I need to again choose which kind of blue I'm going to use, if I'm going to use my cobalt blue or if I'm going to use my ultramarine blue. And I think I'm going to use my um, cobalt blue. And I'm also going to decide which red I'm going to use, if I'm going to use the magenta or if I'm going to use um, that crimson. And I think that the magenta is going to give me more of the kind of purple that I really want. So I'm going to mix a bunch of this color so that um, so that I have it and I can um, use it uh, for, for the, the whole time that I'm drawing. Excuse me, I'm painting. So I'm going to fill this little palette. I'm going to just add a bunch of water so that it can make um, so it can make a lot of color. And I'm just using my brush and adding it in. And then I'm going to add some more blue and then add more of that magenta and really create the kind of violet that, that, um, that I want. Yeah, that's looking good. So that way I can mix that violet with yellow as I'm working uh, on that value scale. But by having a lot of it, it's going to be easier for me to to um, be able to be consistent with that color. Okay, so let's see what that looks like on the paper. Maybe it needs to get a little warmer. I think that's a beautiful purple, royal purple. So here in the middle, I'm going to use again for my mixing. So I'm using this yellow and I'm just going to add tiny little bits of violet into it and see what happens. So because there's so much blue in that uh, violet, this first color looks um, a little bit green. And then let's see what happens when we start to add more. So yellow and purple definitely have um, create this kind of gray. And it's a green gray. Uh, it's a really complicated color, um, but it's a lovely color. It's really interesting and complex so that you can use it um, again in shadows and in other um, areas as you're mixing these two colors together. And I almost wonder if I could have gone one more step 
uh, with like a really color right in between these two, but that's okay. We'll just try to step it up each time and, and see what happens to this color. And again, here in the middle, it should read like um, a gray, more like a blue gray, a, a green gray. Uh, as it steps up towards the purple, it should um, it should get more and more blue going into violet. Really nice for um, foliage. Like if you're doing um, a plein air piece and you're working outside, really nice for um, the shadows inside of trees, for example. Let's go one darker. Nice. And again, I already have my colors mixed. So I'm going to go to a smaller brush just because my little um, clothespin has a lot of detail and I have to choose which side of that clothespin is going to be um, the light side, like where the light's hitting it. And mostly for this one that has, you know, pretty simple, a pretty simple form. So I'm going to decide that that's the bright yellow side. And now I'm going to mix um, a little bit of that more green uh, color and use that on the sides. And again, you can work either um, wet on wet or wet on dry. Both are going to work really well. As I'm using a lot of little detail in here, um, working with something that's wet on dry is going to give me a little bit more control. Mostly as I want, as, as I don't really want for a lot of that color to bleed into that bright yellow that I mixed. So now let's make the uh, these two colors. I'm going to take a little bit of that violet, vi uh, violet and Maybe this, yeah, we'll, we'll put the lighter color on top again of this clothespin. And then, uh, I missed one spot. Let's make that side be a light, little bit lighter too. And then I'm going to mix a little bit more, make it a little bit darker. And do the other side. And again, I can always go in and, and do some more details. Um, I don't have to paint everything in one shot. And then let's make these two, which are a little bit uh, darker and more blue. Let's do it backward this time. Maybe a little more yellow for that one. Just trying to match the color that's right underneath it. And let's see. And then for that last one, I'm going to start with the dark violet that I already have pre-mixed. And then I think that the one I already still have mixed next to it is the color that, um, that I am looking for that's this color. And 
and it's okay if they bleed a little bit into each other. That's the nature of, of watercolor. It's beautiful that way. They're not going to completely change or saturate each other. And then if I want um, a little more extreme contrast, I can take a little bit of that really uh, extreme violet on the other side of that value scale and I can you know like add it in places or add the yellow in places in the opposite direction to just create a little more contrast just playing with that with that contrast And yeah, let's um, let's go to the to the last one. I'm looking at those red apples, and I'm just thinking, oh, is there something that I can do now that they're a little bit more dry to just make them pop a little bit more uh, to give it one more kind of uh, layer? Which again, as I mentioned before, you can do. You can just glaze one over the other. Or if I wanted to uh, add another layer of um, and glaze over that, that one was just a little bit too red. I can mix that right on the paper itself, but I can glaze over a section this way too, changing the color a little bit or making it wet on wet and letting that all bleed together. Okay, and then we're, we have one more. We're gonna go from orange to blue. And we're gonna have to mix our orange because um, we, don't, we don't have an orange in this palette. Um, so let's um, choose the kind of orange that we can make. So again, we have two yellows. We use this um, cool yellow within the um, the color scale with the purple. So maybe we go to this warmer yellow. And let's use the warm red as well. I think it's gonna give us a beautiful orange. Let's mix a, a bunch of that again. So just, it's good to change your water in between um, uh, the scales just so that it doesn't get contaminated. But I'm being a little bit lazy. So I'm gonna mix a bunch of that orange for myself. And I think I'm gonna use um, the ultramarine blue I used the cobalt blue last time. So I'm going to use this warmer blue this time. And I think it will be a really nice complement um, to this orange. So let's see what that looks like as I just put it right on the paper. And let's look at our orange. And this is probably my favorite color scale. Um, and it's because the colors that you get while mixing orange and blue are just so beautiful. I mean, I think that they're all beautiful. I think that like the red and, and green and creating those really interesting browns are really important, mostly as you're working with something in nature. Um, same thing with the yellow and, um, and purple. But this is one of my absolute favorites because you make this really interesting turquoise. And so let's, um, let's see, let's show you what kind of color you get. So here's a little bit of orange that just mix a little bit of blue into it. And let's see the color that we're gonna start to get. So this one's gonna be just a little bit um, more brown, still really on the warm side. 
and now let's add more blue. And you're getting this kind of gray, really nice gray color. I'm going to add more blue. So now it's like almost black, which is so interesting. I'm going to add more blue still. More blue than that. And then let's saturate it. Never be afraid to add more water. <laughs> you can always add more water in watercolor. So as you can see, we just have this really complex palette with these really interesting blues and blue grays. Depending on what kind of blue you use, you can also get a turquoise. I think that if I use the cobalt blue, this color would be much more turquoise. In fact, let's just try it so you guys can see. Um, so if I use my other blue, Oh no, that was wrong. I thought I grabbed from the wrong one. So you can see the difference in uh, mixing if you're using a different blue. So this is what it looks like with the, with the cobalt blue instead. I keep grabbing from the wrong blue. One sec. So if we start to saturate that, it's just a very different um, color that you're going to get, um, which is oh, I keep grabbing the wrong blue, which is so cool. I just love I love that uh, difference too of what happens when you're using a um, a warm uh, blue versus a cool blue. And then we can put that blue directly out of its little uh, pail. And you can see that difference in that, in that same color uh, scale if you're just using a different color blue. And I could probably remix this orange so you guys can see, can see that um, again. As just the other version of that same scale but with just um, a little bit of the different blue in it. I'm gonna move this just a little bit up so you can see. Sorry if it's been off of view. So that's the difference that a different blue would make. It's kind of cool. Okay, um, I am going to paint my little hippopotami. So 
so this was my little demo on um, using complementary colors and um, in starting to think about how they all mix together. So um, feel free to experiment and play, change your um, change the different uh, blues and colors that you're uh, using. See what happens when you make a purple with with a different red and a different blue um, and really like experiment and play even what happens with this complementary color scheme with the green when um, when you're using a different green and a different red uh, so uh, feel free to to play try things work wet on wet work um, uh, wet on dry and um, don't be afraid of using the water you want to make um, you know like kind of it's okay to make a mess you can always sop it back up with a paper towel if it's not doing what you thought it would or even if it's not doing what you want what you thought it would uh, let it let it um, dry and see if you like it wet it again and see what happens when you pull it back up so for example, back to these green apples, um, they're dry, but then if I uh, want to wet it again and lift again, I can actually take quite a bit of that watercolor back off. Uh, watercolor isn't permanent, and so you can continue to lift and add and lift and add. Um, so yeah, play. Uh, play and see what happens when you, when you get to play. All right, see you guys in the next video.